Hello, introduction to Java programming. In this session, we will discuss about arrays. How to declare arrays, how to define an array, how to initialize and how to read write uh, data to and from arrays. Let's begin. Firstly, what is an array? An array is a group or collection of similar data items. It's a group or a collection where we'll have similar data items placed. Why we say similar? Array will not allow dissimilar data items. Array can be of integers, array can be of strings, array can be of floats or doubles, or array can be of characters, but you cannot club them. So array contains only homogeneous data elements. Okay, and other than this homogeneity, and there are other properties which are associated with an array. Array is fixed. Whenever we define an array, we have to tell what is the size of the array. And array is indexed. An array can be indexed. Index always starts from zero and goes up to size minus one. Let's assume my array size is 10, my index starts from zero and goes up to nine. Array is randomly accessed. So you can access any element of the array with the index. You can go to the last element, you can go to the first element, you can go to the middle element, whatever it is, randomly you can access. Need not to go sequentially. By index, you can actually access any position of the array. Either you can actually provide a value to that particular position or you can actually fetch the value from the array. Also, Arrays are contiguously allocated. That means all the elements in an array are allocated one after other in the memory. Let me actually tell you with an example. I will actually annotate now uh, by creating an array. Let us assume, so this is an array and array will have certain slots, right? So this is slot zero, then this is slot one, this is slot two, then slot three, slot four, slot five, and slot six. Okay, so what is the size now actually? So let me actually give the size here. So this is at index zero, this is at index one, this is at index two, this is at index three, this is at index four, and this is at index five, this is at index six, and then this is at index seven. So what is the size actually? So zero to seven, so total eight elements actually. So my array size is eight actually. So how I declare this array? Let me actually uh, uh, define this array. What I'm saying is this is an integer array. This is how I'm going to do it. Of course, I will explain again the declaration. And my array name is, let's say, array. And we will write actually in Java like this, new int of, what is the size? Eight actually. So this is how I create an array. The creating an array is nothing but array definition. Okay, so now because size is eight, the index starts from zero to seven. Okay, so now what I'm saying is array is fixed actually. See, size I have mentioned, so it is fixed. And array is indexed. So you will have index start starting from zero to n minus one. Indices are always positive. We cannot have negative indices. And array contains homogeneous elements. Okay, if you want, we can actually give certain elements as well. Let's assume at arrays, array of zero, I have element 10, and here I have some 20, and here I have certain 30, and here I will have some 40, and I'm giving 50 over here. And later, uh, actually, when I, when I, whenever we create an array and we are not giving any values, by default, they will be zeros because the default value of integer is zero. When an array is created, all other elements actually will be with zero. And I have assigned 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 to some of the array elements. Let's assume like that. Okay. So now what I'm saying, they are indexed, they are fixed. And what is randomly accessed? Now what I can actually do is array of five. 
whatever array of five is there, right? So now I am actually giving a value 99. So random access, right away I'm going to array of error of five, that is this position. And what I'm doing, I'm actually giving 99. Okay, so now what I can do is array of, let's say some six equals to, I can also say it is array of zero plus some 10. Okay, what is array of, array of zero? Array of zero is 10 plus 10, 20. And this one I'm assigning to six actually. So now this is going to be 20. Okay, so randomly accessing. Okay, now what I'm doing here, I am actually saying array of some one equal to, array of one equal to, array of uh, six plus array of, uh, let's say four. So what is array of six? Array of six is 20, array of four is 50. So 50 plus 20 is how much? 70, right? So now my array of one 20 is going to get replaced and will be 70 actually. So like that I can randomly access any of the slots, any of the slots. Now let me actually give value for array of seven as well so that my array will get completed. And my array of seven is actually, uh, let's say one double line. So I'm straight away giving certain value to this. So this is going to be my one double line. Okay, so this is what randomly accessing the array elements. Okay, and let's understand contiguously allocated. Okay, so what is the name of the array? So name of the array is ARR. Usually, this is actually pointing to my base address. The base address is actually at the index zero. So this is whatever the address is there here, we call as a uh, base address. Let's assume this base address is uh, some 2000. Base address is from 2000. Okay. Now, what happens is the next element actually. So, next element is actually integer element, right? So, integer take four bytes. My next element will be at 2004. Okay. And this element will be at the address 2008. And this element will be at the address 2012, actually. So, the array elements are contiguously allocated in the memory. The first element is a 2000, next will be after 4 bytes and next will be after 4 bytes, next will be after 4 bytes. So array is allocated contiguously, sequentially. Okay, so we know the base address and we know the number of elements and we can actually tell what is the last address or what is the address of a specific element. We know the index and we can do that actually because they are allocated contiguously. And array is homogeneous. So homogeneous means similar actually. So integer array will contain all integers. String array will contain all strings. You cannot club integers and strings actually. So finally, we can actually define an array, array like this. An array is uh, a fixed, indexed, randomly accessed, contiguously allocated collection of homogeneous data items. Okay, so a proper definition of array would be like this. An array is a fixed, indexed, randomly accessed, contiguously allocated collection of homogeneous data items. So that all the properties are covered in the definition. Array is fixed in size. Array is indexed. Index start from 0 and goes up to n minus 1. It can be accessed randomly. The memory is allocated contiguously for all the array elements and it's a homogeneous collection. Okay, so with this, uh, we understood uh, the definition of array and now let's understand how do we declare an array and how do we define an array and how an array will get initialized and later, uh, what is the length attribute which is associated with an array and by default, arrays are implicit objects. So implicit object means the, the object is straight away available without any class actually. So we don't have array class. Object is straight away available and the object can be applied with certain attributes and there is one attribute called length actually which will give the size of the array. That we will understand after that how to read data to an array and how to uh, write array elements, how to print the array elements. So this is all we are going to discuss and before that I am clearing all the drawings over here. Yeah, let's understand the declaration. 
So in order to declaration, I'm just going to this program. Yeah, an array can be declared like this. Okay, I want to declare an integer array. I can write like this, integer array. Okay, so for example, ARR, this is the array declaration. This is just a declaration. I have not created, I have not defined. This is just a declaration, array declaration. Okay, and in the same fashion, I can also declare a string array, something like this. String array orgs is already there in the main method. In the same fashion, uh, string array cities. Okay, I can actually declare string array cities. This is just a declaration. Okay, we are just declared. No memory is allocated. So array is an object, right? So memory should be allocated with the new operator. Okay, so in the same fashion, I can actually create uh, some uh, double array actually. So double array temp. Okay, temperatures. I am going to monitor temperatures. Double array temp. In the same fashion, I can have a character array also. A character array, let's say ovals. Okay, so these are all declarations. No memory is allocated. Okay, in fact, so these can be declared in a C style like this also. It can be declared like this. So you can also say double temp followed by the descriptor. These also, both are same actually. So here you can also declare like this car vowels and followed by the uh, array subscriptor operator. So both are same. This is a C, C++ style and this is a Java style. Okay. Uh, but here no memory was allocated. So now how to allocate the memory? How to assign the memory to an array? How to create or define an array? So now I can say error are already declared, right? So error equal to new int of new int of 10. Now my array is defined. This is what array definition. My array is defined. So array is created. Defined means it is actually created. So some memory is allocated for this particular array. In the same fashion, I have cities array, right? So now I can actually say cities equal to, so cities is of type string, right? So new string of how many cities you would like to have. So I want to have five cities. So size I am specifying, right? Array is fixed. In the same fashion, temp equal to, now new, new is actually a memory allocator. Okay, so new double of, so how many? So I want to monitor seven um, temperatures, seven cities temperatures, let's assume. Okay, the same fashion, ovals, ovals. So ovals equal to a new care of, so how many characters you have in ovals actually? Okay, so A, E, I, A, E, I, O, U both capitals and uh, in lowercase. Total how many? 10 actually. So I am giving 10. So this is what array de definition or creation. So first part is array declaration and this part is array definition. Okay. So now you can actually combine both of them also. You can combine both of them. So now let's see how I am going to combine. So for example, now I am saying integer array marks. Okay. Integer array marks equal to new int of new int of let's say uh, six subject marks so here what i am doing array creation actually array creation or definition you can actually say this is a definition or creation so we are declaring okay at the same time i am actually creating uh, the size actually uh, i am creating the array also in the memory by specifying the size okay so the declaration is also there and the creation is also there, right? So Java arrays are different than C and C++. Okay, in C, you can actually do something like this. Int uh, A of 10. This is allowed in C and C++, but it is actually a compiled term error in Java. So you cannot actually give straight away a size here. Okay, the size has to be allocated dynamically. Okay, so in Java, memory is allocated dynamically, not statically. So this is an error uh, in Java, but it works actually in C and C++. So C and C++ style will not work in Java because in Java, memory is allocated dynamically. You need to use a new operator and you have to separately create uh, the memory for that. So when I say new int of 6, so 6 into 4, 24 bytes is allocated over here. Okay, so here new care of 10. 
So 10 into 2, 20 bytes is allocated. So new double, 7 into 8 allocated. Okay, so here, a uh, new string of 5 actually. Right, so each string, uh, uh, how much it is actually taking, so that depends. Right, so that much memory allocated. So int means int into 4, uh, int is 4, so 4 into 10, 40 bytes is allocated. Okay, so this is about array uh, creation and array definition. Okay, so now let's understand array initialization also. Okay, array initialization. So initialization means at the time of declaration itself, you are providing the values. At the time of declaration itself, you are providing the values. For example, now let's see. What I am saying is int array marks equal to int array marks equal to. Now I am providing the marks actually. Okay, so what marks? Out of 10, I am giving the marks. 6, 7, uh, 8, 9, let's say 8 here. And then let's say um, now 10 by 10. And somebody got actually 7 again. And some 6 again. Then 8 again. And some 9. Okay, so like that, I can actually specify uh, the values of the array. So how many I have? 4 plus 5 total 9 actually so let it let me make 10 so I am actually giving 5 so and semicolon so what is the size so size actually you can see here int array marks equal to all these values and size when we count actually it is 10 okay so if at all you want to find programmatically what is the size you can actually do like this also just let me print actually marks dot length marks dot length so length is an attribute which is going to provide the size of an array and here the size should be 10 actually so let me compile and show you that the size will work perfectly java c test dot java yeah when i say java test now let's see actually so size is how much 10 right so the length attribute will give us the size automatically so but basically what i'm explaining here is array initialization at the time of declaration you are actually providing the values so here i am not using the new operator okay while initializing you need not to give the new operator automatically based on the values you have given the size is actually attributed and the size is nothing but uh, how many data elements are there so 10 data elements are there that you can actually find with the help of length attribute length is not a method it's just an attribute this is initialization the same fashion i can actually initialize some string array so string array i am writing actually something called cities right so let me actually give some strings over here so now i am saying here uh, pune is my first string and then i have hyderabad as a second string then i will have chennai as a third string and then i will have the bangalore as the fourth string now i will have delhi as the fifth string and of course the last string i am just going to give is actually the mumbai right okay and what is the size so the count actually so count is nothing but six actually right so now you want to print specifically because array is randomly accessed right you can actually say cities of uh, uh, what so cities of one so what is cities of one cities of one will be hyderabad right so now you want to say cities uh, of uh, now you want to say five so cities of five is actually so zero one two three four five so five is actually mumbai so in the same fashion you can actually say uh, cities of uh, let's say six cities of six exists so when the size is six you will have the index starting from zero to five 6 doesn't exist actually. So here, whenever it is not existing, we are going to get array index out of bounds exception. Array index out of bounds exception. Okay, let me let me show you this. So line number 15, you are going to get an array actually. So let me compile, run and show you that it is actually going to give you an, an exception. At the compile time, there is no issue. Compiler is fine. So when I run actually, see, I am getting the size 10 here. Then Hyderabad, I am getting cities of one, cities of five, Mumbai, but cities of six doesn't exist. So I will get array index out of bounds exception actually, because that index doesn't uh, 
that that index is not available actually right so instead of that what i'm doing arrays of three i'm doing so arrays of three is nothing but bangalore right so arrays of three will be bangalore okay so this is how i can actually initialize and i can access the data items also right now i want to print now i want to print all the integers and all the cities actually so how do i print so firstly i would like to print all these integers i want to print here itself actually so what i do normal for loop i can write here so so printing actually so how to print printing array elements so how to print array elements let's see okay so what i'm doing because i have already elements so i am doing something like this for int i equal to zero index start from zero i less than i am starting from zero i will go to size minus one right length minus one so how do i find the length minus one my array is actually marks so marks dot length right so i less than i am saying so marks dot length i less than equal to means marks dot length minus one right i equal to zero I am I am going up to i less than max dot length, max dot length. I am using less than operator. So size is ten. I am going up to nine, right? And then i plus plus, and here I can actually print all these values. So system dot out dot println, and my array name is max, and I can say max of i. So i equal to zero, I will get six. I equal to one, I will get seven, and of course i equal to uh, nine, I will get the five values actually so line by line i will be seeing all these values okay that is one thing now this part we have understood right this part already we have understood yeah so okay so of course randomly i am asking and that part we understood so now i want to print again so print this print i want to print cities actually so this print all the cities now i can write actually like the for loop which we have learned uh, where you have initialization, test condition, and uh, increment decrement, and also you can actually use a for each type. So for for each type. So how to use for each will actually work with the collections or groups. I have an array. So now I have cities array. It contains string, right? So for each string, see in this particular group called cities. I just want to say print actually all the cities. So for each string C in cities, otherwise I can say for each city in cities. So just it's a variable actually, right? So print that particular city, that's it. So now we are actually printing here. Printing cities using for each actually. Okay, whenever you have a collection, you can actually do with for each. Of course, here also I can do that. Instead of writing all these things, I can actually write if a furry statement also how do i write a furry statement over there this is something like this for yeah so each integer i in this particular group called marks okay what i do here just system dot out dot println i just say sop of that particular i that's it okay either this one or this one actually so i, ju I just want to show both of them so that's why i have written here so let me actually compile and show you that uh, the reading, uh, the writing actually, printing is easy. Java C test dot Java. Now you can actually see Java test. So now actually initially I am printing marks dot length. Then I am printing all the 10 values over here. So after that this HYD Mumbai and Bangalore will get printed. And later on actually I am uh, printing all the values from the array. So I have Pune HYD. Chennai, Bangalore, Delhi, and Mumbai action. So this is how we uh, print data from an array to your monitor or console device, whatever it is actually. But how to read values to an array? How to read values to an array? So here I am actually initializing, right? So I am reading uh, by initializing the data. I'm reading by initializing, right? So now what I do, I will take an array and where I will actually uh, read uh data to my array okay so by using a random number by using a random numbers okay so now i will have one more array just to read actually so let me write the comment here read data to an array 
using a random method math dot random actually so how i am going to do that how i am going to do that okay let's see okay for that first of all you require an uh, array right so which array we will take uh, a random actually it will give you double values from 0, 0.0 to 0 0.9 right so i will just take that one actually so i will have a double uh, array okay so double array uh, a random numbers okay my array name is random numbers equal to so how many random numbers so new double of new double of how many randoms you want so you want 10 random numbers i want 10 random numbers okay so what i'm doing here is i'm writing a for loop for int i equal to zero i less than uh, how many times so i know the size is actually 10 so i actually get random numbers dot length this is the size of my random numbers array and i plus plus now what i'm doing here uh, i am actually assigning see random numbers of i is equal to random numbers of i equal to i have to give 10 numbers right so what i do here just i say math dot random math dot random how many times this math dot random will get executed 10 times because your loop is executing how many times 10 times so 10 times math dot random is going to get executed and every time it will generate a double value the double value i am giving to random numbers of i right first value in the random numbers of 0 the second random value generated is random numbers of 1 until so on random numbers of 9 actually so this is how i am reading okay and i want to print actually so now let me write for each for each double okay some d in this particular group called random numbers okay just print actually all the random numbers that that is nothing but d okay so now how many arrays we have actually one integer array where we have initialized and one a double array where we are not initializing but i am reading a data to my array using math.random so you know math.random will generate a value between 0, 0.0 to 0 0.99 right so 999 and it will so on actually so i want 10 random numbers to be generated and they should be placed in my random numbers array and after that actually i am uh, printing all of them let's see okay and of course i have a cities array as well and that already we have seen so let me now compile java c test java and when i say java test now you can actually see here so now first 10 got printed then all the elements 10 elements are getting printed from my marks array later i have my 10 random numbers these are the random numbers that are generated because they are the double numbers so you will have double numbers will have uh, almost actually 15 or 16 decimal points okay then you have these three things getting printed and later your cities array all the cities are getting printed actually so this is the example for array initialization of course array declaration definition and array reading and writing array to the console actually okay so as part of the arrays we understood what is an array and what are uh, other properties as part of the definition how to declare an array how to define an array defining an array requires new operator and you have to specify the size and how to initialize an array you can give values straight away without new operator automatically uh, the array will get allocated in the memory and it will have a size that you can actually find with the length attribute and array is an implicit object in order to read data you can actually use a number of ways i am reading the data by generating random numbers you can actually read data from the user uh, but that means the user means from the keyboard with the help of uh, uh, some classes like scanner buffer reader console etc we will see that as we progress and how to print actually when you are printing you can use a for loop and you can do that and you can also use for each because for each will works with the groups and array is a group so i hope you have understood the basic concepts of the array and i will uh, meet you in the next session where we are actually 
discussing some more important features and programs of programs on arrays thank you